Well, good morning, magandang umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today is Thursday, and you can hear in the background, the generator is running again. Remember, every three days, because of the Bot Elect 2 upgrade of all the electrical poles on the main road. So, I, I have not been idle this morning, even though it's 11.32, I just didn't start doing today's video until very late. And I will tell you why after we come back in just a moment. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. things I did this morning I went down to my local gas supply company that sells LPG liquid propane gas for Gasco right here they're right around the corner from our house and I picked up a tank and you're probably saying James are you ready to hook up your gas grill well yes I am ready to hook up my gas grill and I'm gonna show you what I hope is this the total solution to getting the gas grill up and running Let's get into a quieter spot because it's really loud here with the generator running in the basement. It's echoing through all the concrete walls. Uh, we'll go upstairs and we'll talk a little bit more about this. Okay, I now have the gas container, the gas tank, back here on the grilling patio, uh, the barbecue patio on the back of the house. Now, uh, the challenge that I had was in the Philippines, what they use for regulators is they have a regular regulator that connects to the valve here, and the regulator has a bayonet, a uh, bayonet style connector. Basically, you take a hose, you slide it over, and then you put a clamp on there, and you just screw on the clamp. Uh, just like you would do with a water hose, say like you busted a water hose on your house. Now, to me, that's not the best solution, that's not the safest solution, but it is what it is in the Philippines. Now, in the U.S., what they use are things like this. Let me show you the connections that they use on their regulators. You see these type of connectors right here? Now, these are compression fittings right here, and what they're, they're, they're very safe, and they're set to a specific standard. Now, this is the end that goes to the grill that makes the connection to the gas grill. And this is the regulator that we use in the U.S. and Canada and probably a lot of other places around the world. And it has this type of connection on this end. Now, this connection that connects to your gas tank is not the same connection as this. So obviously, this is a female connection and this is a female connection. So it doesn't work. So what I did to look for a solution, I did like I normally do, I did some research and I went on a bunch of bulletin boards and blog sites and I looked at YouTube videos. I Googled it, I Googled it and I tried to find uh, a solution that would give me an adapter that goes from my high quality, uh, the regulator and this secure connection right here to this connection down here on the tank. Now, I, I came up with a bunch of uh, bad hits. Uh, many of the bulletin boards and many of the blog sites, basically what they want you to do, they want you to cut off, <laughs> cut off this, this, this hose right here, cut it, and then it, it'll be open and then hook up to the Philippine regulator, which has that bayonet connector that I was telling you about. Uh, and then just put a clamp around it and use their regulator and, uh, and a lot of times their hose. Well, I didn't want to get rid of this because I think this is high quality and I think it's a safe connection right here uh, for, the, for the connection for the, the LPG gas to, to the gas tank. Now, I did not want to sacrifice this high quality hose and this compression fitting and this regulator that's made, it's matched to go with our gas grill right here. Uh, so I decided that I'm going to take on the challenge. Now when I say I was 
determined to take on the challenge is because all of the bulletin boards and the blog sites, they, it, it was a defeatist type of an attitude. They all said, no, you cannot find uh, a, an adapter that connects to here. And they said, your only choice is to cut it and use your, the bayonet connector to the, uh, the Philippine regulator and put a clamp on there. I said, and I love a challenge. You know I love a challenge. So I did, I did research and research. And what I did was I found on Lazada, I found this adapter right here, this brass adapter. Now this section right here, it fits into this section right here. Uh, it does a nice secure fitting inside there with the good O-ring on the inside, the, the rubber O-ring. And the other end right here, this section right here with the o-ring as well it fits in to the lpg tank like so so what you end up doing uh, you end up doing this type of a connection so i'm not going to tighten it up all the way yet uh, but you get the point so there are adapters available out there. Now, it hasn't been smoke tested yet, and I shouldn't use the word smoke test around LPG gas. Uh, but what we're going to do, we're going to do a sanity check. We're going to do a check after we make the connection to make sure we have no leaks. And the way you do that, you basically mix up some soapy water solution. And after you make the connection, you put the soapy water around all your connections, and you look to see if there's any bubbles that are popping out around the connection. And that will give you a good feeling that your tank is not leaking and your hose is good and your connection to your regulated valve is good as well. So we're going to do that now. If this is successful, then the next step is we're going to check the grill to see if the grill comes on. I know everybody's been waiting to see if the grill will work. Now the moment everybody has been waiting for since. Oh my goodness, remember we got this gas grill. We purchased it from Wilcon back when the basement, uh, the foundation to the basement was being done. Not even the first floor, not even the second floor. We were storing this in the basement <laughs> before there was a first floor. So let's see if it works. Well, it seems like the first burner works fine. Uh, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to clean it. It hasn't been cleaned for a year and a half since I purchased it, sitting in the basement uh, with all the construction debris. And even though I've kept it covered as much as possible, it's still dirty. There's a lot of uh, dust from construction inside the compartment, inside the grill. I'm gonna clean it all out. I'm gonna functional check each one of the burners. And then uh, maybe we'll schedule a cookout this weekend. Okay, all cleaned out and a oh, test of all the burners. This burner goes here, this burner goes here, this burner goes here, this one goes here, and this one here goes to the back. That's, I, I don't know if that's for the rotisserie or to keep things warm on here. I think it's more for the rotisserie 
putting uh, the heat against the side as it's cooking. Now I have the rotisserie parts. Here's the, the pieces for the rotisserie, the, the little long spear that goes through the chicken or the pork, and then the motor. The motor is over here in the motor mounting bracket. Now I have to decide which side I want to mount it on because you can mount it on this side over here or you can mount it on this side over here. Now if I mount it here, I can always connect up to these, this electrical right here. But if I wanted to mount it here, I would have to drill a hole through this portion right here and connect, to, connect up to the power that's underneath the grill itself. I don't really know which way I want to do it. I'm going to take my time uh, and, and decide on how I want that done. Also, I said all the burners are working fine, no issues. But the other thing I did find an issue with, which is going to hold me back a little bit before I can actually do the inauguration, is I want you to see the, the gas tank, the top of the gas tank, it hits the the drip pan up here you see the drip pan so what that means i have to do i'm going to have to cut a circle to drop the tank down just like you would on a u.s portable gas uh, tank a lot of them have a subfloor which this tank drops down and the reason for that on those portable ones is when you're moving the the portable grill around so that it doesn't fall over inside now obviously it's not going to fall here but we need we need uh, at least one inch of more headspace underneath this little drip pan up here. So that, and that's gonna be a hard job because I don't have an inch. I only have about, mm, about, uh, about a quarter of an inch of the tile. With, that means three quarters of an inch, at least three quarters of an inch, I have to chip out in the concrete foundation underneath this, which is going to be a real hassle. Uh, but it's got to be done, so we'll have to do that, and I might start working on that today. Well, as you probably can hear, the generator is still running because it's 5 o'clock, but it's been a beautiful day, and I expect this 12-hour brownout to go until the full 12 hours. Uh, another hour it'll probably be running. Uh, so that's why you hear the noise in the background. Uh, I'm going to do a wrap up here for today. I, I was so busy I didn't really capture a lot of video. I don't think I did. I don't know. I'm always surprised sometimes when I go back and I check my video uh, for the day. But uh, all the things that got done after I was working on the gas grill, uh, I don't think I captured much of that. But we'll talk about it when we do the closing for today. But before we do our closing for today, I, ha I just have a couple of birthday shout outs that I want to pass on to you. And the first one for today, for October 18th, goes to Ronald Franzis's, his Asawa, Edna Castalis. And, and Edna, Ronald says he wants to send his own birthday greetings to you from Dubai. And our second birthday shout out is another, coincidentally, it's another shout out from a husband to his Asawa. Uh, and this comes from Dennis Legak, and he's sending it to his wife, Alma, who is turning 45 today. Anyway, Dennis and Alma, they live in Bologna, Italy. Oh, mamma mia. So to both you, Edna and Alma, I want to wish both of you a happy birthday. So as I promised, let's go ahead and do a wrap up of what got done. Since we're standing back here by the gas grill, we're just gonna kinda take a look inside this area right here. So the gas grill gas tank is installed. The only other thing I really wanna do is I wanna put a bottom vent inside here. There's plenty of air movement from the bottom of the grill here, where the drip tray is. Uh, LPG gas, drops it's 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 heavy lpg gas is heavy and it goes to the bottom so if there were a leak i would like some way for the gas to get out so what i might do i might drill some holes in the back side of this grill not on the side over here but in the back where it goes over the stairwell uh, if i can get some holes back in that area uh, that would aid with air to flow through the bottom of the of the gas grill i just have to be sure and take a look at and see where all my wires and my plumbing pipe are uh, so this is almost we're almost going to call this completed uh, also except for putting the rotisserie in remember I want to install that too uh, let's go back and take a look at the cistern you didn't see me doing the work on that I did a, a slam dunk job of that at the very end of the day and I'll show you the little trim work I did on the access manhole cover
Now, although not calling this complete yet, because I still have to do some screening on it to keep debris from falling in, and I have to put the hinges in, I have to put a couple of handles here. Uh, but this, you see the little trim on the outside, the very edge? That was the trim, and it's a decorative kind of thing. It looks good. Uh, it makes it look like a real door that we have here. Uh, so again, I have to do the hinges, the little handle, and possibly I will do a hydraulic hinge on the inside uh, to aid with opening and closing. Believe it or not, this door, I would say it probably weighs, oh, I'm going to say about 65, uh, 65, 70 pounds, uh, maybe like about 30, 30, 35 kilos or something like that. It's a very heavy door. So for those of you who had the concern about somebody coming back here and opening a door and falling in, well, I'm the only one here, and I know Hopone, well, I think, well, I don't know, Hopone might be a super dog, but I don't think he can open the store on his own. Now, as I predicted, the guys were gonna finish up everything that had to be done out here on the backside. I, th I think they finished it up today. They might've finished it up yesterday. All I know, it's done. So all this is done. Let's go to the back of the, of the property on the north side, and I'll show you what they were working on today. Well now, today the prime focus of, the te of attention was this area back here. Uh, you, you see the back side of our property, uh, which is the north side. Uh, you can see a lot of the facing, uh, the outside portion of the uh, fence posts have the cladding on there now. And I imagine this will continue all the way to the end and they'll probably try to knock this area out. I'm not gonna second guess what they're gonna do. I don't know what their strategy is and what direction that they're going. All I know is they like it back here because if you see, this is the shade. <laughs> this is a shady area and, and, and I have a feeling they're, they're hibernating <laughs> back in this area. Now I'm just making a joke, but I did notice that they really enjoyed it. And it's been a very hot day today. It was an extremely hot day. It seems this is supposed to be winter time going into winter time. But remember the Philippines, the Philippines, it's like this all year round. Today, I would say uh, temperature wise, it was probably in the 90s uh, in Fahrenheit. And I don't know, 35 or I don't know what it is in centigrade right now. I would have to do the conversion. But it was really hot. It was like the middle of the summer in the U.S. in South Carolina where I come from. And now for what my gardener was doing today. No, he wasn't making a sand hill for Hapone to play on. Uh, but Hapone loves the sand hill here. He always plays on it. Uh, what he did was, remember, all this sand was up against. You can still see. Uh, and I need to wash it off. The wall over here is where the sand was all on, on that area. Now what I did, I asked, I asked my gardener, let's go ahead and clean this area out. Let's move everything between the sidewalk and our fence. And what we're going to do is we're going to clean up all of the soil. There's a half meter area of soil inside here that normally plants go, grow inside there. Shrubs, small trees, ornamental trees, and things like that. So we're gonna clean up all this area because it hasn't been cleaned since we started doing uh, the very beginning of the build in like March, uh, March of 2017, a little over a year ago, a year and a half ago. Uh, so he's cleaning all this area. As soon as he gets that cleaned up and we put a little bit, deposit a little bit more of good soil inside there, we're gonna go to some of the nurseries uh, locally and maybe up in Laguna. And what we'll do is we'll find some really nice shrubs to go all around the perimeter to complement this really nice stonework and fence that we have around Villa Feliz. I gotta tell you, I'm really excited about how well the grass is doing also. Look at how green everything is getting ever since I started cutting it down on that proper level with the lawnmower. And even the grass, even the grass in the grass blocks, uh, it seems like it's doing well also. And I know a lot of people say, why are you putting grass? It was so beautiful having the, the blocks inside there where you could see the nice reddish, the dark red color of the blocks, of the grass blocks. Well, this is a farm lot. And farm lots, now, uh, you ha can only use 25% of your property for structure. And the structure includes your house, if you have an, a garage outside or a building, a storage area. And it also includes if you put pavers or concrete down 
for your driveway, it also includes that area. Now, if you put these kind of grass blocks down, which provide support for your vehicle to move in and out, uh, but you fill it with grass, that doesn't count against your 25%. So that's why we're putting the grass. So if anybody has a question, that's the answer why we're doing it like this. But I, I tell you what, I think it looks really good. And I, I think it's gonna be really beautiful once it all grows in all the way through uh, and so what we'll do from time to time we'll do a drone shot and we'll take a look at it and watch the growth of the grass inside the grass blocks uh, during the evolution of the build here at Villa Feliz. Well now that being said I need to close for today. I, ne I need to get a shower. I'm covered in concrete in my hair. I can feel it uh, from doing all that grinding inside making that hole in the uh, gas grill area in the base of the gas grill. Uh, and then I need to fix some dinner. Then I need to edit this and get this out to you all as soon as possible. So that being said, if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. Please share. And if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You will be subscribed and you will be notified the next time I upload a new video. So until such time, you have a wonderful and blessed day.